Rolling Stones always been a lot of publicity about this business of groupies. Well, it's not only the Rolling Stones, I mean, it's every band. I mean, groupies means girls that attach themselves to groups. That's been going on for longer than you and I have been alive. I mean, I like them, you know. One of the great things about groupies is that they make you write good songs. <laughs> I'm back in LA and it really does feel good to be home. I have one last groupie girl to meet with, Miss Catherine James, the most beautiful of all the groupies. Not only was she incredibly beautiful and charming, but she had a little toddler son. It was just an adorable little cherub and they went everywhere together and they charmed the pants off of everybody from Jackson Brown to Jimmy Page. But her most significant relationship was with Mick Jagger. So you ready? Should I put my cigarette out? Yes, we don't want people knowing you do that. I'm still a rebel. Yeah, right. I'll rebel always be a rebel. Dirty lungs. No, I got the lungs of a swimmer. So my doctor told me. <laughs> How did the boys feel about you with your little kid with you all the time? This ringleted. Little they wanted to marry us. Damien was so cute. He looked like an angel. Mick said he looked like. I found him under a mulberry bush. Oh, yeah. Everybody was so in love cute. with him. Oh. And they, the two of us together were quite the sight. When did you and Mick finally actually hook up? Well, um, it was Jim Gordon. He was the drummer for Derek and the Dominoes. And he was having a... It was his birthday, and Eric threw him a big party at mm. the country house. Yeah. And everybody, rock royalty, showed up. George Harrison, Mick Jagger. Everybody who was everybody was there. Everybody was in the living room playing music, and George he was just writing My Sweet Lord, so he uh, wanted to play it for Eric to see what he thought, because they liked to play music together. Yeah. But somebody had um, spiked the punch with mescaline. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't know it. Nobody really knew it, but somebody put a lot of mescaline in the punch. Oh. And so there's about six or eight people all jamming My Sweet Lord. And I'm feeling the music is kind of vibrating in my whole being. And I'm <laughs> feeling just amazing. So I go in the study, which is right next to the living room where they're playing all the music. And then I could hear somebody come in the room and they just picked me up and he pushed me against the wall and started kissing me. Like you imagine somebody would kiss you in your Like you imagine Mick Jagger might kiss you. It was even better than that. <laughs> How is that possible? Because the music, My Sweet Lord, was playing in the next room. Live. It was filling the entire oh house alive. God. Yeah. And it was like... And then he slid me down the wall was we were kissing. Then we were making out like crazy. Yeah. Oh. I think we did that for about 20 minutes. Oh. Mm. It was hot. Mm. <laughs> Everyone wants to know if Mick Jagger is a great lover. We were totally into each other. And yeah, <laughs> he was a great kisser. I remember that for sure. But he was a wonderful guy in every way. Yeah, he was I think sweet. He was, he was caring. He was so smart. He was educated. Yeah, he was interesting. Mm -hmm. He had great taste in music. He turned me on to so many great artists that I never would have heard of. You became his girlfriend. I right? became his. He asked me to move in. Yeah. <laughs> he said, "Well, why don't you move in with that's me?" That's just incredible, Catherine. He said, "I love you." I'm like, oh. Oh. Okay. Did you <laughs> tell him you loved him back? Yeah, of course. Oh. We lived in this gorgeous place. On yeah, Cheney Walk. On Cheney Walk, and Damien uh, had the nursery upstairs. Yeah. And, you know, he was great with my son. He was the perfect boyfriend. But you had to go to California for some reason, I right? didn't have to go to California, but I thought, well, he's going on this tour, and I'll just go for like three weeks. Mick and, was going on a tour. Yeah. So when I got to California, for a while he was calling there, he was calling less frequent. Yeah. And then I didn't hear from him like a week, and I'm like, whoa, what's going on? Oh. And then I see the tabloid picture of Mick Jagger and his new lady love, and I'm like... Bianca! Bianca. So I called his house. Yeah. And his and she answered. That's exactly and what I happened to me. And I hung the phone up. That's exactly like, what happened Well, I guess that's the end of that. Yeah. <laughs> she said to me, don't you ever call here again. I didn't give her that option. <laughs> You just hung up and you heard her voice? I heard her voice and I went, it's true, <laughs> click, that's done. Oh. I didn't want to humiliate myself. Yeah, I figured just leave it like it was, it was great. He kissed me goodbye and walked out the door and it was perfect. Catherine is a true rock and roll insider. I mean, living with Mick Jagger? And even though her experiences with all these musicians came and went, I think each one of them represented a very special time in her life that she will no doubt cherish forever. I would say no regrets. I'm so happy to be given the invitation of life. 
That's yeah. my feeling about it. And it just goes by like that. Yeah. And I can say I've never had a dull moment in my entire life. My life is as exciting today as it was 47 years ago. <laughs> I know, it's a real blessing. I've been a really lucky girl. Yeah, me too. No regrets. Mm -mm.